Okay, welcome back to talking about scheme macros. So, last time, which was episode 28, I think, uh, we revisited the macro code from episode 6, and we sort of you know, modified our, our syntax for define relation a little bit. And we also, um, wait, oh yeah, so so that was the old test. Like, wait, didn't we fix this? We took the uh, new test macro and we improved it um, newer, to make newer test where we do the select binding to make sure that we're not evaluating expressions more than once and to avoid uh, potentially exponential explosion of code in the expanded macros. Okay, so those was what we talked about in episode 28. And this is all mod um, motivated by real world use cases, in particular, wanting, wanting to you know, solve problems related to mini Canron. And the implementation that we're using is Michael Ballantyne's faster hyphen mini Canron implementation on GitHub. So this file expects to live in that uh, repository. And I've created a GitHub um, uh, repo that where this all lives. Okay, so um, anyway, I'll have a link to it in, in the comments for the video. Um, but anyway, this file's on GitHub. I'm calling this one epi-0006.scm, even though we modified it in episode 20, 28, but this is where we originally created it. Okay, so if I want to, because this file is in uh, Faster Mini Canron, I can just load the file, because when I, uh, just, just a word about Emacs, by the way. So I have my Emacs, uh, you know, set up. So if I do control Z, control C, it starts up Shea Scheme. And it starts up Shea Scheme in whichever directory uh, the buffer I'm in, or sorry, the file I'm in uh, that I'm visiting um, when I can hit control Z, control C, whatever directory I'm in, that's where I'm starting Shea Scheme. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so we can load epi. 0006.scm. Okay, great. And uh, make sure our newer test works. That's fine. And last time we played fun games with expand and all that. Great. Okay. Um, so, so these two macros are pretty simple. Okay, so the only things that are uh, maybe a, a little subtle are in... You know, define relation, we have these dot, dot, dots, which, like I said, represent zero more occurrences of the previous pattern. And also, for the new test, we had this issue where, you know, we we were um, evaluating test expression multiple times, and test expression appeared in the output multiple times, uh, as, as did expected expression. Uh, and we wanted to cut down on that. In case there's an, uh, <clears throat> some sort of side effect or if it takes a long time to evaluate one of these expressions and also to avoid uh, exponential explosion of code, the, you know, those are reasons why it's good to do let binding. Uh, I will say that the expanded code still has a test expression appear once. The, the expression itself that gets evaluated, which would appear in this let, and then also uh, also appearing on the right-hand side of the lat, uh, test expression appears again inside a quote. So uh, we still are doubling uh, test expression. So if test expression happened to be huge, if it happened to be a one megabyte expression, well, now our output is going to be at least two megabytes in size. So, you know, that's uh, something to keep in mind you know, with, with this particular approach, but, you know, we've decided we actually do want to see the expression and it started out as a one megabyte expression in that case. Well, now, now, uh, we've doubled in size. So just be aware that, that that could happen. All right. <clears throat> um, so we're, we're trying to solve issues related to mini Canron in this, in this case, because I want to ground it. I want to ground what we're doing as something real. 
<clears throat> ultimately what we're working up towards is an alternative syntax for Mini Canron, uh, alternative to the run syntax that um, we we show, run or run star, that we have in, say, the reason schema um, books or in the papers, all that sort of thing. So, um, <clears throat> you know, so we're going to uh, reconsider this uh, syntax and and semantics uh, where and and do something different with it. <clears throat> in particular, I want to emulate something closer to Prolog, where you can get one answer back instead of all all six answers. But in this case, where I can get one answer back and then incrementally, in a convenient way, ask for additional answers. Um, so that's <clears throat> an interface I want to implement. But before we do that, I think. It'd be cool to do one more macro, uh, one more version of test. And once again, this is going to be motivated by a real use case. So um, I'm going to create a new test macro. And this is going to be <clears throat> um, I'll call it test diverge. Okay. Uh, divergence means you can think of it as infinite loop. Okay, so this is like test test infinite loop or test should never finish. <laughs> uh, test test never terminates. This expression never terminates. So so in this case, we don't need an expected value. We're going to have some test expression that we expect to not ever come back. It's just going to run forever. Okay. Well, so how do you test an expression that runs forever? Uh, that's a good question. So Huh, uh, that's a little tricky. Mm, what do we do about that? Well, there is a nice feature built into Shea Scheme, and I thought, well, maybe I can make a, a video about this feature in terms of nice features in Shea, but it's also in Racket in a somewhat different um, you know, packaging. Uh, and I think at this point, some other, other schemes uh, support this. So I'm just going to go ahead and show it in the context of the macros. All right. So we are going to look up what's called an engine. An engine. Let's look at engines. So we're looking in the Shea Scheme uh, user's guide. Engine. Let's see if I can type engine. <clears throat> okay, see engines. There we go. Engines. Uh, <clears throat> all right. And then here, what is this? This is for the scheme programming language, engines, multitasking with engines. Okay, so engines are described both in the Shea Scheme users guide and also within uh, the scheme programming language fourth edition. Um, so here we go, multitasking with engines. And we have a couple of references. Okay, so here are papers describing it. Uh, okay, uh, Kent Devig and Robert Heeb, Engines from Continuations, 1989, and what is 15? Uh, Chris Haynes and Daniel P. Friedman, Abstracting Time Preemption, preemption with Engines. Okay, so this is from 1987. So this is the, the older... Uh, paper, and then there's the 1989 one on um, implementing engines using continuations. Okay, so so these are the papers uh, that you can go off and read if you want to understand this better. Or also we can look at uh, Kent's book and <clears throat> actually both books, both the Scheme um, Programming Language Fourth Edition and also Shea Scheme User's Guide. So let's see, this is fairly short. Um, I don't know that I want to read through it all. Well, let me just give you the basic idea. The basic idea is that an engine is an abstraction that allows you to represent a process and has an abstract notion of time that are called ticks. And uh, so it gives you uh, supports timed preemption, okay? At least, at least in in sort of the the version here in Shea, there are these notions of ticks. And what exactly a tick is? Well, it's implementation dependent. You can also imagine a timer-based mechanism. 
um, that's using wall time or something like that. If you look at Racket, Racket supports uh, an alternate interface and you can do, um, I think, real-time based, uh, like clock time based uh, versions of engines using, I think, events. Um, I don't know, I've, I've messed with that a little bit, but the the sort of uh, classical version of it, as I think, uh, the, the one that Dan Friedman taught me, uses a notion of ticks. And at least in an old version of Shea, I think there was a tick that got incremented every time there was like a procedure call, for example, there was a tick, you know, that would happen. And you could think of it as an interrupt opportunity. Um, and so you can write, you can create an engine and give the engine a computation, which is basically just going to be a thunk, a procedure of no arguments, like it's called. So you, you give the engine a thunk representing some process to perform. You give it a certain amount of gas. Okay, so think of it as a car, and you put in put in some gas, and which are ticks. Um, and then you basically have a continuation, or you, you have a function. I'll think of them as continuations. You have like a success continuation and a fail continuation is the way I think about it. You, you give two procedures, one procedure that gets called if the computation finishes within a certain number of ticks, then that that function gets called or procedure gets called um, with the result and also with how many ticks remain. If, however, the computation keeps going and runs out of ticks, then the other, other procedure gets called um, and it gets past an engine. It gets okay, so 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 it gets past an engine representing like a continuation for the rest of the the processing, and so you can call the engine again. So if you want, you can keep giving in, um, gas to the new engine, and you know keep going. You could do this like in a loop, uh, and it allows you to um, to run this process a little bit at a time, and you can you know, build like a little simple operating system type th thing with this, or, you know, you could build like a mini canron ish thing for search with this. So there's a, another abstraction called ferns that I'll talk about at some point, I'm sure, uh, that, that is related to the engines. Uh, so it's, it's very interesting. You can do all sorts of cool, cool things like lightweight threads and operating system kernels and non-deterministic computations like amb like things um, so it's it's pretty cool and and at as hard as continuations so uh, we could talk about this you know this whole mechanism of engines and maybe look at those papers in some detail but anyway like like I said so an engine <clears throat> the engine itself I think I, I may have uh, messed up my exact description of the interface. So like, I think the engine, there's an engine creation process that takes the thunk and then returns the engine, which takes these three things. Well, we'll see. It'll be easier when we see. But anyway, the text is a positive integer specified as the amount of fuel or amount of gas to be given. Okay, that's abstract. An engine executes until this fuel runs out or until its computation finishes. Complete. The procedure of two arguments that specifies what to do if the computation finishes. This arguments will be the amount of fuel left over and the result of the computation. Expire, a procedure of one argument that specifies what to do if the fuel runs out before the computation finishes. This argument will be a new engine capable of continuing the computation from the point of interruption. Okay, so you can keep going if you want. All right, so... Um, and then we have this just kind of <clears throat> trivial engine, you know. So let's just try just try a, a couple of these at the REPL, just to make sure we feel comfortable with it. So blah blah blah. All right, where am I? Yeah. Okay. So define engine, make engine. Okay. So so make engine is part of the interface, and it takes a thunk or a procedure of no arguments that. Um, <clears throat> wraps around the computation. The reason you use thunks like this is so that you can make make engine 
make engine is just going to be a procedure. Like I can already tell just from the interface that make engine is going to be a procedure. Well, let me make sure that's true. It's not special syntax because if it's special syntax, you wouldn't wrap it in a thunk almost certainly. Okay. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but I uh, generally when you see something wrapped in a Lambda. So the reason you wrap a computation in a Lambda nil is to delay evaluation because this could be something maybe that goes in infinite loop. So we don't want it looping uh, forever. And as a general rule in sort of scheme language design, you don't make something a macro or special syntax unless you really need to. And so if you want to have, you know, and you know, delay the evaluation of this potentially infinite computation, yeah, just wrap a thunk around and say, hey, give me a thunk, and uh, the engine will do its thing. And notice this is called make hyphen engine, not engine. That's also a very schemely thing, make hyphen something. So this is an engine constructor function. Okay, and of course, we don't need to give it a name. We can just call make engine on its own. We get back a procedure. So an engine is a procedure. I can already tell you that. So we can tell a lot just from, you know, even without reading the documentation, just from playing around a little bit. But let's go ahead and make an engine. Okay, here's our engine. It's a procedure. The computation is pretty trivial. So the computation evaluates the expression three, which will evaluate to the number three, the value three. So there's not a whole lot there. But once we have the engine, we can call the engine and pass it three arguments. So there's a number of ticks or fuel. <clears throat> okay. And then we're going to give two procedures. Okay. And okay, let's see. So this is going to be the value and text remaining. And this is going to be the other. Okay. All right. So the, these are basically continuations, like little continuations, not call with CC, call CC continuations, but little functions that know what to do with the rest of the computation. All right, so what are we calling these? These are called complete and expire. Okay, so this is the complete procedure. This is the expire procedure. Okay, so the complete procedure will be called if the engine ends up finishing evaluation of this expression before running out of ticks. And then this complete procedure will be passed the, um, the value and also the remaining ticks, ticks remaining. Okay, so that's what it is. In this case, we could just return V, let's say. Um, if there's an expiration, you know, uh, then we get past a new engine. That's what the E is. You know, uh, engine ran out of fuel. And I, I encourage you to read, um, the manual to, to play around with it. I think I got all the arguments, right? Let's try it. Okay. So it didn't take any ticks at, wait, I must have returned the ticks. <laughs> I must have had these backwards. Yeah. Okay. So I had the arguments backwards. All right. Um, okay. So, so, you know, I can, I can return a list of these. So I'll return the number of ticks remaining in and the value, well, it didn't take any ticks apparently to for three to evaluate to three. It's not very exciting. So let's give, let's cre uh, change our engine a little bit. You know, and so first of all, let's make it something that's not evaluating to itself. Okay, didn't take any ticks still. Let's make this, um, all right, let's make it a heroic computation. All right, I have to go in a couple minutes. Um, how about this? Uh, lambda x, x applied to x, uh, applied to itself. So this is also called omega, the omega combinator. This is a canonical infinite loop in scheme, okay? Uh, Self-application uh, in a certain form. Okay, so let me just make sure that that's right. So I'm claiming this uh, loops where I'm only to try. All right, that's my proof, proof of divergence. It's not really a proof, but it didn't seem to come back, did it? 
All right, so that's a that's a very handy thing to know, by the way, that, that omega. All right, so let's try it again and see what happens. Oh, this time the engine ran out of fuel. So we tried evaluating omega, or the engine tried evaluating omega for a thousand ticks. Well, ran out of ticks. Well, I'd imagine because omega should never um, complete. It should never uh, finish. So we are going to use this engine mechanism <clears throat> to create a version of, of our test macro, this, this test diverge or whatever. Um, so we can package things up and run the computation that we expect to diverge for some number of ticks. And then the, the interesting thing is if that computation returns, if we end up calling the complete procedure, well, in that case, it's an error because we expected this computation to go in an infinite loop. If we get back, you know, if, if the expire gets called because the engine ran out of fuel, well, then that means the test passed. Okay, so um, this engine mechanism will allow us to, to easily write a test macro for computations that should diverge. And in mini Canron, that's quite common that you would have some sort of computation that, well, maybe ideally you would hope it wouldn't diverge, but certainly if you have a concrete version of a logic programming language, um, there are computations where they're going to diverge. So uh, we found that to be very helpful for testing when writing the reason schemer, for example, because there are certain computations we expected to, to diverge or we knew their implementation would make diverge and we claimed that diverged in the book. And if we change the implementation of mini Canron, we wanted to make sure that that claim that the computation diverged uh, was, you know, was still true even when we were changing the implementation of the relation or the implementation of the uh, of mini Canron. Okay, so this gave us some confidence we could just give a uh, large amount of ticks or small amount of ticks. And, and that was the other thing, we could parameterize it. Uh, we could say, okay, um, if we really wanted to test this thing, let's uh, give it a large number of ticks. <clears throat> Otherwise, you know, if, if we want our tests to run very, very quickly, you could set this number of ticks to be very small. And, and these tests would sort of almost instantly finish. Um, so that way you could, you know, run lots and lots of tests quickly. Uh, but then when you really want to make sure everything was right, you could up that up that ticks to as much as you could tolerate and, you know, maybe run the test overnight if you really wanted to. Okay, so we're going to look at this um, next time and uh, implement. Actually, this is a challenge for you if you want to follow along and do some homework is make the uh, macro finish implementing the macro that we started writing, uh, writing the test diverge macro, figure out the interface for the macro in terms of what the pattern should be, and figure out the template uh, using engines, okay? And then maybe come up with an example if you know Mini Canron, or, or you can just try an example using Omega like I already showed you. So this this Omega um, expression right there that that is going to go in an infinite loop. <clears throat> um, so you can you can test it out. So you have everything you need to define this little macro and make sure it all works using Shay Scheme engines. Okay. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye bye.